Hello my soccer universe, let's recap the action the conference league yesterday evening. It was split into two slots, actually I wonder why only the conference league, I think the Europa League would also have benefited from that and I maintain as great as the Champions League was, uh, why don't we take on Tuesday or a slot conference league, then Champions League, on Wednesday we can have early slot Europa League then Champions League and then on Thursday we could have early slot Conference League and late slot Europa League and we would have it evenly spaced out quite nicely <sighs> but that would be my ideal world so eight matches watching at once and you know when you have Europa League and Conference League are running the Conference League unless at least here unless there's an Austrian connection which fortunately there was thank you Pauk for that uh, usually takes a step back but we had some interesting results and especially since we had the early slot only conference league um, you got a little bit more and I think the best game of the four was definitely in the early slot between Olympiakos and Fenerbahce which was anyway already a match that there were the eyes on because you know Greece a big big Greek team against a big Turkish team knowing the rivalry between those two countries that was always going to be an if you want add to it the backstory of Fenerbahce over the past few weeks and you know there's a whole lot more happening. Of course one thing that I haven't mentioned when the draw was made and, and, and so on, although it was kind of a back of my mind we have two Greek teams in the quarterfinals. We have a final being played in Greece in the new Ajax Stadium, uh, the Agia Sofia Stadium. Um, and so, you know, I think in Greece they're hoping for an all Greek final, although I'm not sure how much they're hoping because, you know, if it was to really be Olympiakos against Pauk, that's gonna be mayhem. Those two teams really do not like each other, those two fan bases are at each other's throats. And the owners too. <laughs> then this is played in the in a stadium of another of these rivals i think this would be apocalypse now in the greek capital but you know it would be great for greek soccer who desperately need some good news as well we also had the really um big name matchup between villa and lille which i think the 2-1 is probably more representative as the, it would have been the 2-0 and then you know the other two ties are relatively open I would say. So in this video you will see the results and all my projections running through while I rattle through the games and we're gonna start in Piraeus, the harbor of Athens, so very very close to the site where the final will, will be played, where Olympiakos took on Fenerbahce, i.e. this is the one duel where I don't have a jersey of either of these teams and where I've said whoever wins I'm gonna try to get a jersey of that team. Well, um... <laughs> Mid uh, after an hour, I was actually already looking. How do I get an Olympiakos jersey? I don't understand. Well, I have an Olympiakos jersey, but you know, because Olympiakos were all over Fenerbahce. I mean, they pressed them on early, and you know, they have Mendy Libar, the coach of that brought the Europa League last year to Sevilla. So I actually think that Olympiakos is very much overlooked. Olympiakos also had the miracle comeback uh, against Tel, Tel Aviv when they lost 4 1 at home and then won 6 1 away from home after overtime so you know have that in mind uh olympiakos is not to be discarded because of this in my opinion they pressed early on for tunis gave them the one nil and then jovic in the third 30 second a really nice curl shot uh after fortunis assist uh two nil at the half and fully deserve it in this way when chiquinho makes it three nil i thought this is gonna get really really ugly for fair for Fenerbahce. but Fenerbahce fought back and got out with a kind of lucky result and that on the back of all the trouble that happened to Fener, Fenerbahce which I have not talked about in this channel because I don't really cover the Turkish league but you know there was a uh, big uh, fight scenes after they have been at uh where fans got involved players got, got, got involved and then I think the only uh, measure was that Trabzonspor were only uh, six games uh, behind closed doors but no other real sanctions then Fenerbahce was scheduled to play a Super Cup on the past weekend instead of being allowed to prepare like they do for other teams. You know, the Turkish Federation Fenerbahce are not really seeing eye to eye. I mean, they were considering moving out of the league even. Kind of that was on, on the agenda, but I think this is a general problem for Turkish teams uh, anyway. I think Trabzons were all not very happy with their punishment, although when you see what happened there. Yeah. I don't want to get too much in it, but uh, the big thing is that there was a Super Cup that was already delayed because of issues in Saudi Arabia that um, 
Fenerbahce wanted to prepare for the, for the Europa League, wanted to have a, a weekend off. It wasn't. They had to play Galatasaray. They played the U19. And after one minute, one nil Galatasaray, the under-19 walks off. So, you know, really, really high vibes around this one. But they found themselves back. I mean, Retzos makes a relatively stupid foul in the box. Tadish converts the penalty. It's 3-1. And then Kaveci, uh, just a few minutes later, makes it 3-2. And this was coming out of nowhere. In the end, it ends 3-2. But you definitely have to feel that, you know, Olympiacos let that one slide. I mean, you were from a almost surefire semi-finalist. It's not hanging in the balance because going to Istanbul is might be a completely different story. It also keeps me from buying an Olympiakos shirt for just a tad longer. Although that one, I've already won, identified for a really good price for Fenerbahce. It's unfortunately a little bit more complicated. But hey, there you go. Uh, the parallel game between Pilsen and Fiorentina, there was not much to talk about. I mean, in the first half, I thought that uh, Pilsen had probably slightly better chances over Fiorentina, the better team, but uh, Fiorentina has always the same problem. They cannot score, although they play nicely, but uh, it was not a good game. There was really not much to talk about. Nil-nil, it ended. It goes back to Florence, where Fiorentina is, of course, favorites. However, they have been shown to, you know, struggle there as well. I'm just thinking about the league. Of our so uh, quarterfinal last year, but you know, Fiorentina should move on in that one uh, if we think about it. Then the big one between Villa and Lille, uh, honestly, this was always gonna be uh, a tight one because I think that Lille is underestimated, especially uh, in the uh, from England. Uh, this is a team that is finding form and they, with Fonseca they have a really good, good coach. I still do not understand why he got fired at Roma. Yes, the results were about Roma playing brilliant stuff on, on, on him. If you give him one more year, I think Roma would have played great. They may not have won the Conference League, they may not have made the Europa League final, but they would have been one. They were already one of the most entertaining sides in uh, the league and yeah. I still do, but I'm happy that he found a, a, a position at Lille and Lille have got a big turn to turn around and are moving up threatening even for Champions League potentially. Uh, what Lille should not do is to leave Oli Watkins with a free header after McGinn corner. That you cannot do. Uh, it's 1-0, uh, but Lille having chances that were saved by uh, 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 by the goalie and, and, and so on. So uh, it was much, much tighter. But uh, at home, of course, Will a little bit better. Of course, Prince William also there, a big Villa supporter. Which doesn't make much sense to me, but okay. Uh, early in the second half, McGinn makes it 2 0, and you think a route is on. Um, however, little oh, doesn't get up. A goal by Goodmans is called off for a very, very minor offside. Um, the game goes a little bit back and forth, but in the end, Diakite pulls one back, and I think the 2 1 is way more reflective of that one. It has to go back to Lil, uh, where I was hoped for a rowdy crowd and a really, really tight tie. May the best team win. Um, I think either team is enriching the Conference League, although I personally think that. Um, Lille is probably taking it a little bit more seriously than Villa, who are probably eyeing a little bit more the Champions League spots in from the Premier League. On the other side, you know, your coach, he loves Europe. So there you go. And then the last one was uh, Paok uh, going to Club Bruges, finding themselves down after already six minutes. What I was wondering, when I look at the Park fans up there, and you know, I am very much colored by what happened now in the fan uh, scene at Lusk, and that will be another video for sure uh, coming this weekend. Uh, they seemed kind of quiet. Greek fans are rowdy. They seemed kind of quiet to me. Was there something happening? Whatever it was. It was just something, maybe it was nothing at all. Uh, but Bruges... Um, <sighs> Very early strike through a fat lesson uh, of the Jutkla assist. Yeah, the guy from Barcelona. Um, and then, you know, uh, they have more off of the game, a little bit more, um, you know, have a better idea of how to uh, create chances. They, however, don't take it. Second half power comes a little bit back into, in, 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 into play. But uh, right when they were about to hit the next uh, wave, they give away a pen penalty. Uh, but Thiago sees he's saved and it stays 1-0 for 
for Park. And given what Park did against Dinamo Zagreb, I think that is a good result. Uh, I think they can turn, turn around in the Tumba Stadium. Uh, I would have liked to see Zivkovic with a free kick to maybe to pull one back a little bit later. But you know, 1-0. I think if you're Pauk, you kind of take that one as well. So yeah, that was it from the uh, Conference League. I think all the ties are very much one-sided. I mean, only the Olympiakos Fenerbahce is a slight slightly gearing towards uh, Olympiakos because they have the advantage, but everything else still has very clear favorites. Um, so we have to see how, how it's going forward. Um, I think we'll see at least one, if not two upsets in there. I cannot just tell you where, but I have Pauk and Lil marked for that one. In any case, let me know your thoughts on the conference like action. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!